January 6th committee has now spoken with another key witness in this investigation. Donald Trump's former White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, testified before the committee for eight hours on Friday. Cipollone's cooperation could be a major step in the committee's probe. Not only was he present for key conversation in Trump's efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election, but he was with Trump as the violence at the Capitol unfolded on January 6th. Cipollone's name repeatedly came up during the testimony of former Mark Meadows A. Cassidy Hutchison. Last month, let's take a listen. Mr. Cipollone said something to the effect of, please make sure we don't go up to the Capitol, Cassidy. Keep in touch with me. We're going to get charged with every crime imaginable if we make that movement happen. Pat said something to the effect of, and very clearly had said this to Mark, something to the effect of, Mark, something needs to be done or people are going to die and the blood's going to be on your effing hands. Here to discuss all these developments and more is our political panel. Charles Blow is a columnist for the New York Times. Keith Boykin is a former Clinton White House aide and author of the book Race Against the Politics of a Darkening America. And former Congressman Carlos Cabello is an MSNBC political analyst. Welcome, gentlemen, all. So, Keith. It's rare that the White House counsel is called to testify before a congressional investigation. Uh, committee member uh, Zoe Lofgren said after the deposition that Cipollone did not contradict other witnesses, which everyone thought was going to be a thing. Uh, and the committee learned some new information. What do you think the potential significance of Cipollone's uh, testimony is at this moment? I think uh, Pat Cipollone's testimony is incredibly important. It corroborates the testimony of Cassidy Hutchinson. It corroborates the information, the case that the uh, January 6th committee is already making against uh, Donald Trump uh, and his inner circle. Uh, and, you know, I, I think it's also important to understand that he came here and he came to the, the committee to testify only under subpoena and only after weeks and weeks of the hearing sort of badgering and imploring him to do something. Uh, so I, I think it's critical information he could possibly add. We don't know what he said, but if it's not contradictory to what has previously been said, that seems to suggest that the committee is on the right path. Also, I just want to say that I don't think that Pat Cipollone is a hero, nor do I think that any of the other people who have testified are heroes, because I think they should have said all this stuff a long time before, before the January 6th committee hearings actually took place. So, Charles, Keith is actually making a, a very interesting point for me. Um, it, you know, it was never a sure thing that Cipollone was going to testify. So I think a lot of folks have made a big deal about that. Is, is this a situation where loyalty over country is bigger than loyalty to Trump? Or is there something else at stake for Cipollone in all of this? Well, I think that during the Trump years, we got so used to people not doing the right thing, not telling the truth, be kowtowing to Donald Trump, that it is sometimes uh, bracing to see people actually just do the right thing and tell the truth. And so that is the category that Cipollone finds himself in. But he didn't do it until he was he was uh, a subpoena to do so. He there was an informal conversation earlier, but not not this kind of on the record uh, uh, testimony to. Uh, uh, before Congress. Also, I think we have to just wait to see what uh, this testimony bears out. According to the New York Times, he invoked uh, uh, executive privilege several times. He is not apparently divulging much about his conversations with the president itself. Some of what we have heard before is uh, are conversations he supposedly had with the president directly, others with other people. Uh, as, it, as for Cassie Hutchinson, uh, the, the Times also points out that, she, you know, although uh, she may not, he may not have contradicted her, they were not asking questions specifically about corroboration. They did not ask him to corroborate her testimony. That's big, right? So, uh, so we have to wait to see what it means to not contradict, but also not be asked to cooperate. And that may simply be, you know, it may sound like, you know, kind of artful language, but it may be that they don't go directly at the issue that a lot of people want to know. Can we add people to Cassie Hutchinson testimony to say, this is not one person saying this. This is corroborated by several people. They say that what she is saying is in fact true, and they 
uh, you know, have sim the testimony that's similar. We don't know if we are there yet. Well, speaking of being there, we know Republicans have been there for Trump. Uh, their loyalty knows no bound on that. And I want to bring attention to this recent piece from Mark Leibovich, which I thought was absolutely fantastic in The Atlantic about Trump's sycophants within the Republican Party. He writes, quote, without the complicity of the Republican Party, Donald Trump would be just a glorified geriatric fox watching golfer. Now, in contracts, in contrast, you have the U.K. Prime Minister Boris Johnson recently resigned this week after mass resignations from his government and after other conservative party members revoked their support. So, uh, Congressman Cabela, why are Republican members of Congress so unwilling to follow this type of example when poor leadership takes the party in the wrong direction um, and unseat Trump, as we saw in the case of Boris uh, Johnson? in UK? Well, Michael, what a lesson for American conservatives from British conservatives, right? The idea that integrity is more important than power. The idea that if someone is unfit to lead or unfit for office, that they should not be followed. Uh, the idea that even if it's a little painful on the front end, doing the right thing is always better long term. Those are the lessons from across the pond. And Republicans here have to decide if they finally want to learn those lessons and put them in practice. Obviously, some Republicans have, but the vast majority have not. I will say about the Cipollone testimony, I think Michael does have the possibility of being as powerful in terms of the imagery uh, as Ivanka Trump's testimony, where you have the mm -hmm. president's daughter saying that she disagrees with her father and the lie he's promoting. Bill Barr, who is the president's attorney general, saying that what the president was doing was terrible and insane. Uh, Cipollone's testimony can have that impact. And although we know that the Trump base will remain on the margins, this is making a difference. And I don't know if it's going to make a difference for the 2022 election, but the implications for the 2024 election, Michael, are huge. So, Charles, I, I want to end up because we've got just about uh, 45 seconds left. Uh, Lindsey Graham, Senator Lindsey Graham and other Republican heavy hitters justify their refusal to cooperate since we're talking about Republican cooperation uh, with subpoenas by saying the investigations are politically motivated. How confident are you uh, that the Georgia subpoenas that uh, Lindsey Graham and others have received uh, will be enforced? Well, th th that's a whole different ball game, right? So Congress uh, mechanisms for enforcement is basically the the, the, the sergeant and armed parliamentarian. Uh, that's not what that's not what Georgia has, right? So this is this is a whole different ball game. This is uh, a subpoena by a grand jury. This is a criminal case. You will show up. He will show. He will get. He will respond to that subpoena. A congressional subpoena is not the same thing as a as a grand jury subpoena. In a, in a criminal case bought, brought by a state prosecutor. This is a whole different ballgame. Everybody out there in your audience should keep an eye on what is happening in Georgia. What is happening in Georgia is very serious for Trump and for the people around him. Charles Blow, Keith Bunkin, and former Congressman Carlos Cabello, thank you very, very much. Next, the battle over abortion rights, women taking to the streets to urge President Biden to push his authority to the limit. I'll ask one of the leaders of the Women's March about the president's new executive order right after the break.